okay thank you we'll start the session so as we are discussing till now we have discussed all the topics which are relevant for both planning as well as consolidation which are used in the projects uh, from today's class whatever we are discussing those are mainly towards consolidation topics which will not be used in the planning at all but whatever the topics we learned that will be useful in consolidation also apart from what we will be learning from this particular 3-4 classes. With respect to consolidation also as we discussed there is a separate model for consolidation when we are creating new model in planning we discussed what are all the mandatory dimensions for planning application now we'll discuss what are all the mandatory for consolidation application so i'll put cons underscore okay. press next this we have already discussed for planning applications we use financial and we set data entry as periodic mode when we select financial then system automatically ask you to refer the rates application <coughs> sorry in order to store the exchange rates similarly when we are doing the consolidation part apart from rates the additional model it will be referred to is ownership application as we discussed these are called non reporting applications or drivers or rate applications which will just store the information which is required for reporting applications so these exchange rates and ownership can be created from here or we can use the standard provided by SAP system because there we are not configuring anything just we are using the data which can be stored in these two applications rates will store the exchange rates and ownership data will store the ownership percentages and percentage of consolidation all those fields so since no major customization is required towards the dimension maintenance everyone will use the standard applications otherwise those can be created using this option also since here we are using the standard we are referring rates which is available in the rates in the standard and ownership which is available in the ownership and as we discussed the data entry mode for consolidation is always YTD basis because whenever we are drawing our balance sheet and all for consolidation purposes where we will be reporting to external agencies it will be on year to date data so always use year to date for consolidation purposes select consolidation as a reporting application when we are creating and then next here also we have saw whether we can create it as a blank model or taking reference of an existing model we can create because by standard SAP provides one consolidation one planning application which can be referred as an existing source model and you can create your own things but here I am using blank model in order because I want to know what are all the mandatory dimensions for consolidation now if you see here when we are discussing about planning application there are only five mandatory dimensions required but when it comes to consolidation along with five there are additional four dimensions that are also required when we are discussing on the dimensions level we said that these additional four dimension will discuss those significance at the time of discussing on the consolidation part first we will see what are all the additional four dimensions and then we will individually go and see what those dimensions uh, stores the data first if you see below screen it is showing what are all the mandatory dimension if you keep your cursor on the information button system will show you the additional dimensions also one is account dimension so I'm adding account and then category and then we will first add what are all the relevant for a planning application entity currency and then type these are the five dimensions we discuss mandatory for any planning application 
Apart from this, if you see the below screen, there are four additional dimensions that are there. These are mandatory in order to create a consolidation application. We'll discuss one by one. First, we'll see what are all the things. One is audio and then scope dimension or nothing but group <coughs> and then intercompany and then sub table. As discussed, these nine are mandatory. Apart from these nine, if you want to have any additional dimensions, you can maintain according to your requirement. Once if you see all the nine dimensions required for consolidation are selected, it will show all the required dimensions have been included. And we have seen only for each type, only one dimension can be used. This we have already seen when we are seeing the planning application. The same rule applies here also. Discussed we can make the dimension secured directly from here or whenever we are activating the security at that time also we can go to the model and we can make some of the dimensions as that we have already seen. The same applies in consolidation also. And it is saying no content has been copied because we are using a blank model. And this is the description and then what are all the dimensions you have selected then create Now the consolidation model has been created. And if you see the consolidation model, all other things which we discussed, these features, same as planning application, all the features are available here also. And then here the additional thing you are getting is the type as well as this additional dimension called scope that is ownership dimension and the data entry mode is YTD mode and here also you can make this model as secure dimension by selecting any of the dimensions. So all the options which you are seeing in planning related activities like work status, data audit, comments, all those things will also be available at consolidation level also. <coughs> Now, coming to the dimensions which we have added here. We have added four additional dimensions. First, we will discuss dimension by dimension. What are all the additional four dimensions we have added? One is called audit trial. Go inside. This is the dimension which is used to segregate the data into the consolidation related systems because <coughs> When we are getting the data from different sources, some systems might be in SAP and some might not be in SAP and there will be data that is coming through different different sources and in system also when system is calculating and posting some entries, there will be system driven automatic adjustment entries. In order to identify the differentiation, we will use the audit trial dimension which is used in so many business rules. <coughs> Sorry, I am having some sore throat, uh, so there will be some disturbance. Just a minute. So if you see the audit trial dimension, here we are saying one is input and another is journals 
equity, elimination postings, currency translation adjustment, consolidation adjustments, or leasing or any other type of data. Why we are segregating is at any point of time, if we want to see what is the data which we have uploaded, then we can create another dimension number called upload and what is the direct input we have made or what is the intercompany eliminations data that is available in the system. We can refer to this particular member and we can fetch all the data. That is first thing. And second thing, as we discussed, SAP has some predefined business rules. So whatever we want to create in consolidation, everything has to be through a business rule. So since SAP has defined the format for business rule, you have to adhere to the format given by SAP. In that, audit trial is the main information which will be used in creating the business rules. So when we are discussing the business rule, we will discuss each one of the dimension, what are all the properties that are required at different different business rules level. So at present, this is used for segregation of the data according to the data loads and according to the eliminations, journals, any adjustments posted into the system. <coughs> and then next dimension is intercompany. So this is something called your trading partner. If somebody is working in FI system, there is a field called trading partner. So this is similar to trading partner. So if you if you are if you are aware of accounting standards, wherever there is a related party transaction, we have to disclose that related party transaction and eliminate the related party sales as well as receivables and payables or any dividends that has been occurred between the related parties. So in order to identify what is the related party, we'll use the interco dimension. That means suppose Australia and China both are related to Asia Pacific region and both are belonging to one company, which may be something as a 50% subsidiary and something might be 70% subsidiary whatever it might be the combination. So if a transaction is happening between Australia and China, then in order to identify who is selling to whom and who is receiving from whom, we need to have a trading partner field enabled in ECC system. So whenever we are doing consolidation, we have to look as a consolidation consultant. Existing FI system also you have to refer and you have to see whether the field status variant for transaction data when they are posting the entries in FI system, the trading partner has been enabled or not. <coughs> if not, you have to enable that particular field. Instead of optional, you have to make it as a required field wherever the intercompany GL accounts are there. So you have to identify at FI level what are all the intercompany GL accounts, create a separate field status variant and assign this field status variant to only those intercompany GL accounts. So that when we are getting the data from SAP system, we will get the data in a proper manner where we can do the eliminations in the consolidation system. So in order to do that, you have to check the existing client FI system also which is available for transaction data postings. So in order to identify what is the trading partner, we use the dimension called intercompany. So what are all the members of intercompany? Whatever the dimension members of entity dimension will all become members of intercompany dimension also.
Okay. Suppose if you see entity dimension. In entity dimension, there is a field called int co dimension. This is called corresponding inter co dimension. If you see here the title, I will change it to ID. <coughs> see this is the property. So for each entity there is an int co assigned to in each of the entity dimension. When we are discussing, we discuss this property is useful only in consolidation. When we are discussing on consolidation, we will discuss. So for each of the entity, you will have a int co assigned to each of the dimension and this member i underscore au should be part of your int co dimension. <coughs> now if you see i underscore au and here there is a property called entity. So in entity there is a property called intco and in intco there is a property called entity. So the, the relationship should be maintained. So whenever we are posting some data, how we will post? See AU entity is dealing with I underscore I underscore AU and this is say receivable. So in Australia books I will write 1000 as receivable. Similarly when I am taking trial balance of say China CM. Similarly when I am taking trial balance of China how it will look like? In China books it will be payable to I underscore AU. So I have to pay 1000 to Australia and in Australia books when I am taking it will show a receivable 1000. So this is the entries that will be posted in individual company codes. So when we are working in FI we will be working only at the individual company code level. But when it comes to consolidation we will be consolidating at group level. So at group level, when I am posting, the transactions in Australia and China both will become my Asia Pacific group. So at that level, one showing in the asset side as receivable, current receivable and one liability side it is showing as current payable. So unless you eliminate these two transactions, your balance sheet will be an inflated balance sheet. So at group level, we will do the eliminations and then we will post the adjustment entries so, so that at group level when I see my balance sheet there will not be any inflated assets or liabilities that will be appearing in my balance sheet. So in order to do that I need to have a field called trading partner. So these fields needs to be enabled at the FI level. Then only we can do the elimination postings in the BPC system. <coughs> Nitesh is having a question, how you link your company code to R3? See, we have a conversion file. You can maintain, suppose there you are calling it as, say, entity 1000, but in BPC you are calling it as Australia. So 1000 is equal to Australia and your conversion file maintain that. If you remember, we discussed the conversion files, transformation files, when we are getting the source data different compared to my destination data. So you have to consider all the options which we discussed earlier also when we are working on consolidation also. And then the next dimension is scope dimension. As discussed for every consolidation, the main reason what we do consolidation is at group level balance sheet and group level reporting as well as group level profit and loss account. So in order to know what are all the profits at which at each group level, subgroup level and at main group level, we will create a group dimension because 
if you remember in entity dimension also we are having groups <coughs> but at group level we cannot add any postings suppose if you see Africa, Asia, Pacific, Europe, North America and South America these are the groups only but instead of posting directly at group level we are posting another dimension called scope and posting the values in S underscore Africa, S underscore Asia, Pacific, Europe whatever is the node members here we are creating as a scope members in the BPC scope dimension so your entity scope as well as intco will be interrelated depending upon one entity dimension your scope as well as intco dimensions will be defined your intco dimension will have base members of entity your top nodes of entity will become the scope dimension members this is very very important and when we are discussing on the business rule part we will discuss what each property does because there are lots of properties are there but out of that we will be generally using the mandatory important properties in consolidation we will discuss what each property does and how it will be related to our business rule and then the additional dimension one more thing is called flow dimension or sub table dimension in BPC this is very very important in consolidation this is also used for segregating the data so when we are working on consolidations and balance sheet any any time our PNL will be having current period data only but if you are using balance sheet it will be having historical data which is a opening balance and current period additions are deletions and then a closing balance so in order to depict what is the opening what is the additions or deletions and closing we have to use sub table or flow dimension in the BPC system <coughs> this is similar to your transaction types in FY system so whenever we are working in consolidation system we have to make sure that there is something called transaction type in your FI system which will be used generally for asset accounting related transactions so the same thing to be enabled for balance sheet accounts so that we know what is opening balance what is the current period additions suppose if you see your FI system there will be 120 which is called acquisitions 140 deletions like that in FI there are transaction types that are defined so when you are bringing it into consolidation you have to map what is there in the opening and what is the relevant value in BPC system like opening so that mapping also you have to do and bring it into the flow dimension this one is scope one, one is the intco which is nothing but trading partner and another is flow which is nothing but transaction type in FI should be activated and it has to be used if you want to properly get the data for consolidation purposes so these are the additional four dimensions which are mainly used for consolidation related purposes and also there is a significant usage of these dimensions in business rules in the BPC system <coughs> If you have any doubts, please let me know before we moving on to the consolidation related topics. First of all, I will change my environment. I think previously it was selected. Hari is having a question, can you speak, speak about mandatory FI requirements for consolidation? Yeah Hari, as I said, those are the two mandatory requirements from FI perspective. No, that is not mandatory. Group chart of accounts, if you are having group chart of accounts, you can maintain. Otherwise, you can take from operational chart of accounts. 
so whatever is mandatory i am putting uh, forward whatever chart of accounts you want to maintain in bpc at that level you will bring the data if you want group uh, level chart of accounts to be maintained in bpc people use group chart of accounts if you want at operational level same thing in bpc also you can maintain at operational level it is up to the client <coughs> so when you are working in consolidation generally the entity dimension will hold the company code related information which is nothing but legal company codes where you will be reporting your financials there might be some things like uh, your business area or profit center which can be used for management consolidation purposes but legal consolidation always happens on company code level Okay. Any other doubts? Okay. Before moving on, when we create a model called ownership and when we have assigned the ownership model to our VPC consolidation cube, we have to do some settings at the ownership model level. Go to ownership model. So when, when you are getting the ownership model for the first time and using the standard model, these two values will not be selected. You have to go and select what are all the values you need to give in these two areas. This is very, very important settings before you start any of the settings in consolidation. So once you create consolidation cube, attaching your ownership application, which is the standard, go to the ownership application and then assign what is the non-intco member in the ownership and what is the parent and child hierarchy used in the groups. These two are mandatory. Now, what is the non-intco member in the ownership? When I am talking about ownership, suppose X is holding in Y. So, both are related. That is called ownership hierarchy. So, when we are talking about ownership hierarchy, to what are the intercompany related only. There might be so many transactions that is happening to an outsider. Only little transactions might be happening between companies which are related. So outside transactions also you need to take the data with respect to outside transactions also generally which is the bulk trans. Generally 90% will be outside transactions. 10 to 20 percent will be intercompany related transactions generally will be happening. So, in order to identify what is the outside transaction, we need to define a member in our in our interco dimension. What is that member you are defining as a third party transaction? Some people will call as third party transaction. Some client will call it as I underscore none that is non intercompany transactions so according to the client requirement you can define the name and you have to assign that name here so that system will take see this is the intercompany values out of all the intercompany values i am saying third party transactions will also there which will be with respect to other than intercompany transactions here I use third party. Some clients will use I underscore none or non intco. According to the client requirement, the naming convention can be kept. But you have to identify and attach that member here. And then parent and child property used in hierarchy of groups. If you remember, the main aim of consolidation is to do group level consolidation. So when we are talking about group level consolidation, so in groups dimension, the hierarchy will be very, very important. Based on the group dimension hierarchy only, the consolidation will happen. If you remember in entity dimension, we use a property called hierarchy in order to store the hierarchy of the entities. But only in the scope dimension, there is nothing called hierarchy. It is called parent underscore group property. 
this is the peculiar thing of scope dimension. We will not maintain the hierarchy in hierarchy place. We will maintain it as a property which is called parent and parent underscore group which is defined by SAP. Now if you go to the structure of the dimension also. If you see hierarchies, we don't have any hierarchies at all. All our hierarchies are maintained in parent underscore group property. Since we are maintaining the hierarchy not at hierarchy level but as a property which is mandated by SAP because there are lot of back-end rules are running for consolidation purposes based on the property selection instead of hierarchy selection. That is why SAP recommends to maintain it as a property and assign this particular property in your ownership values. So in the ownership dimension you have to select what is that particular property where you are storing your hierarchy that is parent underscore group. These two are very very important. You have to first finish these settings then only you can create any additional settings with respect to consolidation. Once you have done this, you can save and close. So, after creating consolidation model, you have to come to the ownership model which is attached to the consolidation and then do these two settings which is required before pursuing it to the consolidation related activities. <coughs> and once we define the dimensions, dimension master data, then the next step is to define the business rules. So in any of the thing which we are discussing for consolidation purposes, it will be through a business rule. <coughs> so for consolidation purposes, how we will discuss is, we will discuss one business rule at a time, we will discuss what are all the settings or what are all the customization steps and then we will discuss the demo on that particular area. Like if you discuss on currency conversion, first we will discuss what are all the prerequisites and then we will discuss the customization and then we will discuss about posting some entries and executing the data manager package and seeing the results like a demo. So that approach we will follow for related activities because it is always stepwise which we will be doing in consolidation unlike in planning applications. So till now if you are having any doubts, please let me know before we move on to the business rules concept. Yes Hari, as I said in my beginning of the session itself, ownership model which is provided by SAP is sufficient because there you are just storing the information and you are not creating any logics, nothing has been done at ownership level. It is only storing of information. See, what I am saying is standard delivered by SAP system means SAP system created model is sufficient, but inside the model the master data will be according to the client requirement. Suppose if I say in FI you are copying 1000 company code. You are copying 1000 company code but you are putting your own GL accounts, your own chart of accounts. That is your customization. Okay, uh, okay. Any other questions? Okay, with respect to the business rules here, when we are defining the business rules, select the business rules and select the model, press add or remove business rules. For the first time when you are using, 
you have to select which business rules you want to create. So I selected currency conversion, eliminations, US elimination, carry forward and account based. Intercompany bookings generally we will not do because the matching as well as elimination we will do it in the consolidation model itself. Suppose if you are having a separate requirement then you have to create a separate model called intercompany matching and then do the matchings in the model and then send the data to the consolidation model and then do the elimination business rule in the consolidation model. But nowadays no clients is asking because already they are getting that validations and everything when they are posting the data. So everyone they want to do in one step the eliminations. So it is no, nowhere it is suggested to use elimination postings through matching concept. So when it comes to activation of business rule, you have to select the model and select add or remove business rules. Once you tick mark that, then system will display like this, the business rules. So when we are discussing about business rules, there are three areas which are there in customization of a business rule. One is for each of the business rule there needs to be a mandatory properties needs to be maintained in dimensions. This is very very important. As I said the properties are very very useful when we are working on consolidation. There are standard properties given by SAP. <coughs> so for each of the business rule there are different dimensions involved and different properties are involved. So first we need to maintain those properties in those dimensions correctly in order to execute our business rule. So that is the first and foremost step we will do with respect to any of the business rule. And second step is to create the logic in BPC system. So you have to create script logic for each of the business rule and then assign a DM package which we have already discussed how to create a DM package using our script logics. So create the script logic, assign the DM package and with respect to script logic I have already told you using UJFS you can download and use the consolidation related script logics without much modifications wherever the names of dimensions are changing only those areas you need to change otherwise you can use the standard script logic available in BPC system. So here also there is no much problem with respect to logic and somebody should not uh, somebody if, nobody, if uh, you are not having any knowledge on logic also you can just download and use it without much difficulty. And then third is to business rule maintenance. This is the third step. So first step is to maintain the properties which are there in the dimensions and for each of the business rule there are different dimensions that will play a major role. So we have to identify what are all the dimensions that play major role in each of the business rule and maintain the correct properties. And second logic and then assign the logic to the data manager package and then actually create the business rule. Once we done this then the next step is to see the demo of the logic and demo of the business rule and how system will post the entries and what will be the end result. So this is how we will go about all these business rules. One, two, three, four, five. Along with these five business rules, there is additional concept called controls and another concept called journals. These two we will discuss. Journals and controls and there is one more topic called ownership manager which is very very important for consolidation of investment. 
So as I previously said, for consolidation purpose, you need to have consolidation knowledge in order to understand the concepts much clearly. But otherwise, if somebody is uh, understanding the functional concept for the first time, it will be little jargon kind of a thing because it is more of a functional kind of a tool which is consolidation. That is why even if you see the BPC 440 book, they first refer to you should have a knowledge of 420 and 430 which is with respect to the planning related books and SAP gives consolidation training separately because of that particular reason only. Now if you see here So they will say that this is the prerequisite and you should have 420 and 430 knowledge which is related to planning. Then only you can work on consolidation related activities. That is why if somebody is not from finance background and first time they are listening, the jargons will be little difficult to understand. But if you keep on the practicing and uh, learn some of the functional concept of uh, accounting, then it will be helpful for your consolidation related activities also. Yes, that is why I am saying BPC certificate includes both planning as well as consolidation topics. Both are there. That is why even if you are not from functional background, uh, take a look of whatever discussions that are happening and at least have a basic knowledge of the 440 related activities because the number of questions will be less only the maximum questions will be in 420 and 430 consolidation also you will be having questions but with less magnitude but it is very important for certification purposes consolidation also And luckily in consolidation they are not asking the functional concepts much more. They are still, they are asking what are all the business rules uh, kind of a thing, all those things at preliminary stage only, not at individually how the functionality will work. At that kind of depth they are not going till now. So first we will discuss about the currency translation. How? No, 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 no hurry. There is no split of consolidation planning like that. All the questions will be combined. One question you will get it on planning, another question on consolidation. There is nothing called a separate uh, section. <coughs> yeah, it's more of a mixed one. But the consolidation questions will be comparatively less compared to 420 and 430. But you can say that 30% will be covered in consolidation, balance 70% will be through other books, roughly. Okay, so we'll talk about currency translation. So whenever we are working in consolidations, so different countries will have different currency requirements and at a group level we might be viewing all the transactions in one single currency in order to know what is my single consolidated profit. So in order to do that before doing any of the currency any of the consolidation related tasks first we have to map our entity currency in FI terminology we call it as look uh, in FI terminology we call it as transaction currency. So that company code currency or company code currency we call it as local currency in BPC system. So the company code currency we need to map it to the group currency or any of the reporting currencies in the BPC system in order to bring the data into the equal status. So that is the first step we need to perform with respect to consolidation because we will be getting the trial balance of different entities in different currencies. 
and in order to get one single currency we have to first do the currency conversion on all the trial balances which we will be getting. So in order to do the currency translation we will discuss what are all the important dimensions and what are all the important properties that will play a role in the consolidation business rule. So go to the dimensions. First dimension is account dimension. So in BPC whatever the data we are posting it is always posted with a concept called LC. This is standard for SAP BPC system. So whenever we are bringing the data from ECC system as a trial balance into BPC all the data will be bringing as LC currency which is nothing but company code currency. So for example this is Australia and say this is Australian dollars and China it is in Chinese currency. So these two are called local currencies and suppose I am reporting at US level. So US will become my reporting entity or reporting currency and these two will become my local currencies. When I am looking at China level my local currency is China. When I am looking at from Australia level my local currency is Australia. Then how the system will identify because for China also when I am loading data I am using LC and when Australia also I am using LC only. How the system will identify that we will see. So when I am translating my accounts so as per accounting standards you have lot of rules that are set in. There will be average, there will be closing rate, there will be historical rate, there will be some places closing minus average rate we will use, there will be some places historical minus average rate, balance will post to the currency translation adjustment accounts. <coughs> so I am not going into the whatever is uh, the rules with respect to the GL accounts. So there are lot of rules that are available for doing the foreign currency translations. So depending upon the country of requirement you have to adhere to the country norms. So I am not going into that. So for example we are taking say P&L accounts we are taking at average rate, balance sheet accounts we are taking it as closing rate. So we need to understand how the system will identify whether it is average or closing rate. For that purpose in account dimension for each of the GL account we have to maintain a property called rate type and in that we have to maintain the values called closing, average, whatever it is. In my example I am taking P&L as average rate and balance sheet as closing rate. So we have to clearly maintain for each of the GL account what is the rate which we are using for currency conversion purposes. Now if you see here there is a property called a rate type and if you go to the structure of the dimension this we have already discussed there is a referential integrity with R underscore account. When we discussed referential integrity in my first class we discussed how it is referentially integrated. That means this particular property is referentially integrating with R underscore account. Now we are doing the currency conversion and everything in consolidation model and we are maintaining exchange rates in rate application and how the system knows this rate application will have the exchange rates which is defined in consolidation. That is why SAP has given a referential integrity property called rate type and if you go to the rate application or rate model. So I'll go to rate model. Rate model the account is called R underscore account which is a referentially integrated dimension. So if you go and see R underscore account values average, closing and our historical. Whatever here we are maintaining, 
only those things we are using here. So when we maintain the exchange rates for these values, system automatically picks this and converts it based on the exchange rate you are assigned to this particular GL account. That is background job that will be triggering for this kind of calculations. But SAP defined the referential integrity for these purposes. Uh, Hari is having a question. Within FI we have exchange rate maintenance. We maintain rate type. Yeah. Hari, whatever you said is correct. In FI you have a table called T cut table. But in FI T cut table generally people will maintain daily exchange rates or weekly exchange rates, which we cannot generally take it for BPC system because we will be generally considering monthly rates for consolidation purposes. Some people will ask to link it to the t -cut table if they are having the monthly rates maintained there or some people will say that they will directly input in the BPC system because it is only two line entry for them. So it is up to the client how they want to see. Uh, Hari, I think uh, you got the, your answer. So this is the first property which we need to maintain and the property values also need to be maintained according to the referential integrity that is maintained. And second is the entity dimension. Now we said everywhere when we are posting we are posting with LC. So how the system is identified this LC is belonging to AUD and this LC is to China because when you select entity there is a property in your entity dimension called currency property. So against entity dimension whatever you are choosing the currency system automatically recognizes that as LC property. So for that purposes this property needs to be maintained and here also when we are discussing we discussed there is a referential integrity with currency property with input currency. Why it is given input currency? Because <coughs> like R underscore account in rate application, there is one more dimension called input currency. <coughs> so whatever here you are maintaining the currency as well as exchange rate, that is automatically linked to your consolidation modal application based on the referential integrity. So that is why in input currencies, whatever rates we are maintaining, those rates can only be used here in this property called currency property. In entity, the currency property. That is why SAP use consolidation application is referentially integrated with rate application for exchange rates and how it is controlling here they are using account which is having property called rate type and here in rate application they are using R underscore account which is also account type dimension there they are maintaining the values so similarly here they are using entity with currency property and that values in rate application they are maintaining in input currency. And if you remember this input currency we are not using in consolidation model. In consolidation model what we are using? We are using a rate application reporting currency, not the input currency. That is the difference between rate model and our consolidation model. And we are integrating both the things using account dimension and entity dimension with a property values. <coughs> so this currency dimension will hold 
the required LC currency. So this is how system will identify this Australian entity, this LC refers to AUD and for China when we load LC it is referring to CHN or whatever it might be the currency value. And in, in our rate application when we maintain exchange rate, this is similar to your FI table. In FI in your ticker table you will be maintaining one as direct quote or indirect quote. Direct quote is for one unit of local currency what is the foreign currency or for one unit of foreign currency what is the local currency that is the indirect rate. Similar to here in BPC also you can maintain the exchange rates using the same thing called direct and indirect method. So go to input currency there is something called multiply and divide. In, in our SAP we call it as direct quote and indirect quote which is uh, accepted globally but in BPC we call it as multiplication or division. Multiplication is nothing but one unit of foreign currency what is the local one unit of local currency what is the foreign currency and if it is a divide one unit of foreign currency is equal to one what is the units of local currency. So we'll, when we see the demo you will understand how it will work. So the same way the direct and indirect quote they are using here multiply or divide option for each of the currencies. So in our ticker table for each currency you will maintain what is the rate types average, closing, historical. Say for AUD this one. So if it is a direct quote use the direct quote. For China, if you are using indirect quote, you will select indirect. So depending upon your requirement, you are selecting this kind of table in your FI system. Similar to that, you can maintain in the BPC system also. As Hari asked, it can be a direct input directly in the BPC system because we are taking monthly rates or sometimes people can take directly from the ticker table if they are saying whatever is the last value in that particular month considering consider that value into your BPC you can take that. So that has to be given from the client perspective. So similar to that in BPC also we will maintain. Then how the system do the calculation? Suppose if it is an Australian entity system will check AUD and system will check say BS110. For this particular GL account what is the rate type used? It is average or closing? Suppose the average is 1.2 and closing is say 1.5. Then if it is an average then system will take one unit is equal to 1.2 in your USD currency. Like that system will do the calculations in the BPC system. So that is why your account dimension and entity dimension is very very important with respect to building the business rules in consolidation for currency conversion. And then in order to maintain whether it is a direct quote or indirect quote how we maintain in SAP we use either multiply or divide which is there in the input currency dimension. Input currency. So what are all the four dimensions that are mandatory is account account should have a proper rate type and that rate type should be a valid member in R underscore account which is in the rate application and second is entity dimension should have a currency property and that currency property value should be a valid member in input currency and this input currency you have to maintain whether it is a multiplication or division. <coughs> So these are the mandatory properties and values we need to maintain in order to do the currency conversion business rule. Dinesh is having a question, can we run the transactions in ECC and bring values to BPC? Yeah, it is possible. Then you need not uh, do the currency conversion at all, directly bring the values from the ECC system. But you have to be very careful because 
there are some GL accounts which we directly maintain in the BPC system which will not be used in your FI system. For those accounts you have to do it in the consolidation directly or else you have to directly post those values with reporting currency values. So it is up to you how you want to bring it. Mm, Hari is having a question. Can we maintain rate type by GL account ranges? No Hari, when we are maintaining account line by line, how can we maintain range wise? See, here every master data is in one row. So you cannot maintain a ranges for this. Like uh, how we do in Excel, select these and merge, you cannot do that. It has to be line item wise. It's not a drawback. In your FI system, how you will do? When you create a GL account, for each GL account you will select whether it is a P&L account or a balance sheet account. And there itself you select whether it is the average. So when you are doing in your FI system, why can't be in BPC system? It is account specific. Wherever master data is there, master data will never be maintained at club, clubbing of the data kind of a thing. Master data always maintains at each individual level. Whichever it might be the system. So these are the mandatory properties we need to maintain in the BPC system for doing the currency conversion. As we discussed, first is the dimensions and mandatory properties. Second is the logic script maintenance. <coughs> so go to consolidation application. So I have already created it. So I am using the same thing, FX trans. This is the thing which I have downloaded from UJFS. Here, as we said, run program and end program is the keywords which use and then this is the program name given by SAP. And between these, depending upon your naming convention, suppose category is equal to, I am calling category as version. You have to select version underscore set. So depending upon your naming convention, you have to give what is the values here. But here I have used the standard names, so I am using category is equal to category set. Currency, if you remember, we are using reporting currency. In rate application, we are using input currency. But this is happening in consolidation level, so it is reporting currency underscore set. TID underscore RA time. Rate entity is global. This is very, very important. If you remember, for creating any model, we need to have account, entity, category, time, and currency property. Here account, we are using R underscore account in rate application. Entity, we are not specifically mentioning this particular average rule is applicable only for entity Australia or something. Because this setting is master data setting which is at global level, which is not entity specific. That is why in rate application we cannot maintain the rates for each of the entity level, which is at a global level. That is why SAP has given a keyword called global as a standard keyword which we use in R underscore entity dimension. This is very important which by default it will be there. If somebody is changing, they have to maintain that value directly here. Go to R underscore entity which is part of rate application. Global is the global entity which will cover all the rates with respect to the consolidation. That is why we call it as global and that value has to be given in rate entity. This is very, very important. And any other dimension like entity, we can keep it in the consolidation related logic. That is for FX trans. Once we created logic, we have to validate and save. 
then you have to create your DM package Okay, so go to data manager, go to organize, organize package list, if you right click, add package, select, there is something called script logic, where SAP has given all the consolidated related packages available, you can select that package, and you can select which group it needs to belong to this is which we have already discussed add it as user package and admin package and then go modify modify script advanced give your file name my file name is fxtrans fxtrans.lgf so give the name whichever the naming convention you use so it is already there so I'm using the same thing like that you can create package and you can trigger the consolidation related activities now we have created the logic and we have created the DM package The next step is to create the business rule. <coughs> so select business rule option. Select currency conversion. So how many rules we need to maintain will depend upon how many things we used in the rate type. For each rate type we need to create one business rule. So I use closing and historically I used only for testing purposes. So I am not creating anything. So closing and average is the main values I am using for my P&L items. So I have to create two rules. So if you are using historical also, in your calculations use historical also. So when you are creating new, you have to create new. So I already created, so using this. So give the name ID according to your naming convention. I used AVG. You can use any naming convention. So I use the same naming convention in order to match the rate type value, AVG, and then description. And here, this is the area where we will be defining our rules. I am saying source flow. Source flow means on which flow dimension values this particular rule will be applicable. I am saying balance. That means closing balance. So for my reference purposes, I am using closing balance. See, balance is nothing but closing balance. Why I am selecting closing balance is because at the end, we will be taking our currency conversion, everything on the closing balance, not on the individual balances. So I am using closing balance. 
but there is no restriction you can use any of the values here and then destination account destination account means when you are posting the values whether you want to post to a different account these values or if you are keeping it blank then same account will get posted when the currency conversion are also happening similarly destination flow that means when I am taking the values from source flow if I want to put the value in a different flow then I have to use different flow here if I am not mentioning anything then it is automatically treated as same flow because as we are discussing the consolidation and accounting practices is not same across the globe different countries will require different treatments and different clients will use different treatments in order to arrive at the accounting related requirements because it is always specific to the country in which you are working on that is why SAP has given the options here depending upon the requirement you have to mold your options into the business rules that is why we are discussing at, at any point of time when we are discussing on consolidation we are saying first we have to understand the functional requirement and we have to write our entries functionally how it will work and then replicate the same thing in the BPC using the BPC knowledge that is how the consolidation related activities will happen because suppose take an example of say there is an asset is there on asset we have a foreign currency trans foreign currency loan is there based on the foreign currency loan we have purchased an asset because of the foreign currency loan there is a hedging happening and because of the hedging there will be a currency translation happens so at any time when we are booking the assets it will be at historical value but because of the foreign currency funding which we have taken there is a hedging happening and at the time of the hedging there might be some gain or loss so this gain or loss suppose if I follow the Indian accounting standards they will say that post it to the asset account directly and if you are following some other accounting standards like IFRS sometimes they will say that post it to say forex gain or loss or reserve account so depending upon the accounting treatment you have to mold your business rule then what it happens then take the flow and destination will account will be the same like asset account and flow will be same suppose if you take a second scenario then what happens the asset account will be forex gain or loss account and then destination flow will be a different flow in order to identify it is coming through a exchange gain or loss account so depending upon the accounting treatment and situation of the handling of the each of the transaction all these rules will differ so that is why SAP has given the options to use different kind of activities in different tabs how to use it that all depends upon your accounting treatment and accounting laws applicable to the country this is very very important and the formula I am putting for average I am saying take the average value directly what is stored in your rate table so I am taking average rate directly sometimes what happens is say some current assets suppose current assets we are valuing it at closing rate so there will be a closing rate of the current period and previous period opening rate so closing minus previous period opening rate will be posted as exchange rate difference account on assets so that is my requirement then what I will do I will put CLO minus average in the formula section in the formula section I will put CLO minus AVG so for the same account I will have one value posted with average and another difference value will be posted to the exchange rate gain or loss account with a different flow that is exchange rate different flow so this all treatment and all will depending upon the requirements of the client so you have to follow the client requirements and see how the client is translating each GL account and then you have to accordingly 
fill your currency conversion business rule for each of the rate type. This is very, very important. At rate type, we are controlling the business rule. So at present, I am taking the direct rate, so I am putting average. And then there is something called force closing. What is force closing means? If you see here, I am having different flows also there. Since I am taking directly closing balance, I am not putting any force closing. Suppose if I am taking an increase, suppose increase I am taking flow. And if I want to post a value into the closing balance also, then if I select this, automatically an entry will be additionally posted in the closing flow along with the increase also. So, along with the increase we are posting directly into the closing flows. So, accordingly you can maintain your records so that you can have the data at the as well as the consolidated data at the closing flow also. So, depending upon your requirement you have to use force closing. And then periodic calc. Periodic calc is nothing but when you are using periodic way of data entry, you have to use periodic calc. But nobody suggests using periodic, it is always YTD basis. If you are using YTD basis, then no need to select this particular option at all. And entity FX type. This means when we said that rate which we are maintaining in here, average and all, which is at global level. But for certain entities, this average formula will differ. For certain other entities, if the formula will differ. Then you define the entity FX type and maintain the property in the entity dimension. I'll show you the property maintenance. See, there is a property called FX type. Suppose if I maintain this and this and this, okay? Then when I am creating the rule, I create here property called FX. Since I have not saved it, it is not appearing. If I select property FX, then what it will do? Only for these three entities, this particular rule will be applicable. For other entities, I have to put a different line for the other entities. <coughs> so like that, if you want to have a different method of calculating, a different method of using the currency conversions, you can maintain those things using the entity FX type. As I said, SAP has provided free facility. Depending upon your requirement, the customization happens. And somebody will ask why there needs to be a different FX rate type. See, it all depends upon different reasons and different accounting treatments. Suppose take a simple example. Suppose some entities I am doing the currency conversion directly in my ECC system. And some entities are in legacy system which doesn't have currency conversion. So I want to perform the currency conversion only to those entities wherever it is coming through a flat file which is a manual entry. So I have to identify what are all the SAP entities through a different identification in the FX type property and those cases you say there is a keyword called as is. That means there is no conversion required. For other line items, you require a conversion, so use the formula. So like this, different accounting treatments might require different kind of functionalities that needs to be enabled. And as I said, consolidation, it is uh, a learning that you have to go through each project wise. And there is no specific things which will be there in each project. It all depends upon the accounting treatments, way of accounting that is happening. So you have to understand the BPC concepts and you have to understand the client accounting concepts and then match what are all the different options that can be captured using the business rule. This is very, very important. This is how 
your consolidation requirements can be fulfilled. So for our example we have used and I am taking each of the tab how it is doing and how it is working. There might be n number of examples for n number of tabs because we are covering one, two or ma maximum three or four situations. There might be some other situations might be using these tabs in a different manner in order to get our requirement done. So it always depends upon client specific requirements. So I am using average using this particular formula called average. Once it is done you can validate and save. Similarly for closing also I am maintaining a rule. For closing I am taking take the value directly from the closing table. If you want closing minus average you can put closing minus average that means whatever difference between closing minus average will be posted to you. If you want separate GL you can put separate GL or if you want to put in the same GL to a different flow you can keep it or both different you can keep it because SAP has allowed these two dimensions anything. So if I say 1000 is my GL account so first it will convert 1000 with closing value then 1000 with closing minus average it will convert and post. So when it is posting since I am having the same if I use the same flow it will overwrite. Suppose if I am putting here F99 or closing flow here I will put say F40 or whatever it might be. I am just putting an example. So here I, what I am doing I am using the same GL account and posting it to a different flow. So whenever I know I want to know what is the exchange rate difference I can select this flow and I can get the value that is arriving between the foreign exchange gain or loss. There might be an instance they will be using say 1001 GL account for forex gain or loss and you might use the same flow and then same logic or you can use a different GL account 1001 and a different flow and take the value directly here. As I said it is all a requirement of the client how the accounting treatment is happening at present. So depending upon that you can use these fields according to the different different requirements. So we have created the business rule for average and closing. Now whatever we have done we have done the property maintenance second thing is script logic maintenance and the DM package creation and third thing is business rule maintenance inside the business rule for all the rate types which we have used in our account dimension. This is very very important. So this is with respect to the customization for any of the business rule. So if you have any doubts please let me know before we proceed to the demo kind. Okay, then we'll move on to the demo and we'll see how the data will look like. Go to template. I created a template already. So I am selecting Entity Australia. I am selecting Closing Balance. 
Intco I am selecting third party, scope S underscore none, audit trail say input, Now, as I said, whenever we are entering the data in VPC, we will be generally entering at local currency level. So, take some values in local currency. Okay. And then, oh, Okay, post some values. And save data. So when I am doing the consolidation, either directly I will be inputting the data or if I am having SAP system, I will extract the data into the BPC system and it will display the data. So here for our example purposes, we are entering the data or else you can load the flat file if it is non-SAP system. If it is SAP system, you can directly load the data from BW system. Suppose I have got the data available in the local currency. Now, what is the first step we need to maintain? we need to maintain the rate table in order to do the currency conversion. Unless there is rate, rates maintained, we cannot do the currency conversion. So go to rate application. PM, log on. So I am logging into the rate application in order to maintain exchange rates. So I have already maintained one template, so I am going to that template. So we are maintaining currency conversion for AUD. So select AUD Australian dollar. Okay, so here I am putting closing rate 1 Australian dollar is equal to 2 US dollar. For our understanding purposes, I am putting value 1 Australian dollar is 2 US dollar when it is closing rate. So when it is average rate, I will put say average is 1.5. and then save.
yeah rate application is a different model that is what we discussed no so when we are discussing we said a rate application will hold the rate information which is nothing but exchange rates and we said we will be using standard rate model that is where exchange rates will be stored in rates and ownership details will be stored in ownership which will be linked to consolidation based on the linkage you have provided when you are creating this model so now it is stored 1.5 you want you can see it by putting commas now it is storing as 1.5 so average rate i have taken is 1.5 and closing rate i have taken is 2 so close we want to save don't save epm log off log on log on to the consolidation model which we discussed open the template which you already op previously opened <coughs> refresh we are already having the data for this and we have maintained the rate table for exchange rates for converting to USD and Euro. Go to Data Manager, Run, Package, for which month the data is there? For February. Okay. Select, I am taking Actual AUD and I want to convert it into US dollar only. I have not maintained for Euro. If you maintain, it will automatically, you can convert it to that. Now I maintain it for February. February. Next. Finish. It is successful. Nine submitted and nine success. Now, now when I'm doing this, when I'm selecting currency, I'm getting only these three values. Why only these three values? Because in reporting currency, we maintain only those three details. This I wanted to show you at the time of dimensions discussion only, but I want to show it here because it will clearly understand. Now here I am specifically mentioning Euro USD. That means only in these two currencies I will be reporting. So all my currency conversion will happen to USD and Euro. If you are having any other currency also, you can maintain. Pre, now we have maintained only for USD, so we converted. If you maintain it for Euro and any other currency, you maintain it here, then automatically system will convert to all the currencies at a time. Then there is something called LC, which is, as I said, by standard we'll use all the data with LC only. And in the currency type, this is the very, very important property. You have to mention R to all those currencies which you want to consider it as reporting currencies and by standard local currency with Y. And then reporting property should be Y, then only we can use this particular currency in our currency currency conversion business rule. So these two needs to be maintained mandatorily in the reporting currency dimension also as a 
property values. So currency type property and reporting property. Once we maintain here as a while, then it will be appearing in our data manager packages also in order to select into Euro and USD. And whatever you are maintaining here, the exchange rates between the entity currency and these currencies, you have to maintain in the rate table. That is mandated, like our FI system. And currency type property should be R, which is important. I just wanted to explain it at this level before uh, discussing at the dimension level itself in order to show the difference. Now come here and refresh. Now see, system is calculating 1 into 2. Okay, sorry. This divided by this. And make it this values. Now see, till here, the balance sheet account, BS accounts, it is taking 2. And when it comes to P&L accounts, PL, it is taking 1.5. Why? Because for P&L, so here for PL accounts, what we selected? we selected average rate. Average is 1.5. For balance sheet accounts, what we selected? Closing. For closing, what we selected in rate table? It is 2. See, for balance sheet, closing CLO is 2. That is why system is converting into 2. This multiplied by 2. And here, system, if you go to my input currency dimension, as I said, like FI, we can maintain direct and indirect quote. How the system knows? If you see, select AUD for which we maintain the exchange rate. For AUD, we select M. So that is why system is doing like this. And for USD, what we selected? D. And here also in reporting property we are maintaining USD as a reporting. And here we are maintaining divide. Divide means one unit of US dollar what is the exchange rate? That is 2. We are dividing the US dollar rate with local currency. Suppose if we say multiply, then what will happen? With this, it will be multiplied the local currency. That means, now, what it is showing? One unit of local currency is equal to this much of US dollar. Because we maintain 1 is to 2. One unit of local currency, how much is the reporting currency? That is direct multiplication. So, if you want direct multiplication, which is nothing but a direct quote in our SAP terminology in ECC. That is why we call it as D. If it is an indirect quote, which is a division, we call it as M. Suppose we change it to M, which is an indirect quote. Save and process. Now come here. I'll delete all those values and I'll trigger again. We'll see whether it will divide or not. Previously it multiplied 1000 became 2000. Now it will become 1000 divided by 2 that is 500. Now go here, run package. Okay, I am triggering the package again. It is succeeded. Okay. 
come here and refresh. Now if you see here 500 it is 1000 divided by 2 is 500 and 7000 divided by 1.5 is Now we have to take what is this divided by this. Okay, 500 divided by 1000. See it is taking 0.5. Why? Because we are calculating 1000 divided by 2 because we are taking an indirect quote here. So that is why I maintain as M. If it is a direct quote, it is a direct multiplication. If it is an indirect quote, it is a division. So according to your requirement, how your exchange rate tables are maintained in your FI system, the same consistency will be maintained in BPC also using the same terminology, whether it is a direct quote or an indirect quote. If it is a direct quote, use D. If it is an indirect quote, which is a division, you use M. Depending upon your requirement, system will calculate. Dinesh is having a question. Normally in ECC, when we run valuation and translation, it is required to do the same in PPC. As I said, Dinesh, if you are doing the currency conversion directly in ECC, and you want to bring the same data into the BPC system, then no need of doing translation again in BPC. If you are not doing there, and if you want to do it in BPC system, then you can do it. And if some accounts which you are creating directly for the BPC purposes, other than any chart of accounts in your ECC system, then those accounts you have to be careful that account should be triggered here in BPC system for currency conversion. <coughs> so these things you need to consider depending upon the requirement because as I said some clients will say I want a daily translated value to be taken into consolidation also I don't want monthly rate so then you do the translation directly in ECC because daily transactions we cannot capture in BPC because BPC we are capturing GL balance wise so then people will do ECC run currency conversion and bring the converted data directly into VPC system. Got it Dinesh? Okay, so this is with respect to the currency conversion. So if you have any doubts, please let me know. Yeah, we uh, actually uh, I'm having some problem with my document retrieving. I will send the file uh, next week uh, because there were some corrupted files. So I could not able to take out those files and send those details. By Monday or Tuesday, you will be getting my mail. Mm. I did not get you, Dinesh. Uh, do we have documentation for 440 means? 440 book is available, and whatever we are discussing, we are discussing mm, module 440, BPC 440 book. Yeah, just now I shown na? This is the 440 book, BPC 440. This is the book. Yeah, when uh, uh, Techie, Techie Training team has given you a link, it, it contains this book also. 
410, 420, 430, 440. 410 is mainly for Microsoft version, which we, sh we are not more concerned about. We are concerned about 420, which is of admin, 430 reporting, 440 consolidation. Uh, Mitesh, I, ca I cannot able to send it because it is almost, uh, each file is uh, nearly 80 to 90 MB. Uh, I think you will be definitely getting the link from Techie training team because they will be having that link, uh, they have uploaded all those details. I will just check whether they have uploaded or not. Okay, my account has been expired, but like this you will be getting one link, in that the books will be available. Uh, if you are not getting any link, just uh, send a mail to Techie Training Team, they will provide you this link, where you will have all the BPC related uh, documents available, including the tab books. Uh, Surely it will be there uh, 420, 430 also, Hari. Uh, again, let me send a mail to this Techie training team. Uh, they will create a user ID for me and I will check and I will uh, let you know by tomorrow's class uh, whether uh, we are having 420, 430 also there or not. Okay. I will send a mail to create a ID for me and uh, send this link to me. Then I will see and I will update you by next class. Not tomorrow, by next week class. Oh, Dinesh is saying he already downloaded 420 and 430. So everybody will be having that. Uh, so you have to search for that. Uh, Dinesh, if you, are, uh, if you know that uh, uh, place or folder where it is there, if you ping that to all the audience, uh, so other people also will get benefited out of that. Because there are a lot of documents I saw when I saw that link. Okay, till now we have discussed about currency conversion. In our tomorrow's class, we will discuss about carry forward and account based eliminations and if time permits, US eliminations and then the journals. And then we will be having a half class with controls and a half class maybe half with the ownership and consolidation of investments. So probably two to three classes more with respect to the consolidation. Yeah, uh, Dinesh has pinged the, the link to everyone. So in that link, he is saying 420 and 430 is available. Uh, you can download that uh, from there. If still, uh, if you are facing some issues, please let me know in tomorrow's class. Then I will take that uh, access for me also and I will check. Thank you, Dinesh. Uh, any other query? Okay, then uh, we'll end the session for today and we'll meet in our tomorrow's class. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, no problem, Dinesh. Tomorrow you can put up the same question, uh, everyone will answer. I think just now we are leaving, uh, so better tomorrow you put early, 
so everyone can answer that question okay thank you everyone